Now, here at Top Oz Tours, we generally stick pretty close to home, but every now and then it's fun to head further afield. Welcome to the fabulous United Kingdom, a travel destination like no other. With the City of London as its gateway, the UK offers centuries of history, culture and tradition to explore, and a road trip is the perfect way to do it. I'm Adam Ford, and in this video, we bring you 10 amazing things to do on a road trip from London in southern England up to the Scottish capital Edinburgh and the Highlands. We'll visit Stratford-upon-Avon, the birthplace of the Bard, then travel north through the Midlands to the medieval city of York and on to Scotland, ticking off 10 must-sees and do's along the way. But before we hit the frog and toad, take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing travel ideas. You'll almost certainly be flying into London. So take the opportunity to explore this incredible city. Here are just two of the highlights to tick off. For a taste of London's extraordinary history, you can't go past a visit to the Tower of London, located on the River Thames next to Tower Bridge. It dates back to the 11th century and has served as a royal residence, fortress and prison. Famous inmates include Elizabeth I and Anne Boleyn. The Tower is one of London's most popular attractions. It's open daily. Culture vultures head straight for Trafalgar Square and the National Portrait Gallery. It offers one of the most accessible art collections in the capital, with portraits of royalty past and present, pollies, actors, sporting legends and more. Everyone will enjoy this experience and the best thing is, entry to the permanent collection is free of charge. Stratford-upon-Avon is located roughly two hours drive northwest of London and is one of Britain's most popular tourist destinations. This charming medieval market town has a history dating as far back as the 7th century, but many of the buildings you see today were constructed in the 15th and 16th centuries. But there's another reason visitors flock here, and that's to visit the birthplace of one William Shakespeare, the world's greatest playwright. Shakespeare's birthplace is a two-storey, half-timbered cottage on Henley Street. It was home to Shakespeare, his parents and seven siblings. The cottage is owned by the Shakespeare Birthplace Trust and is open to visitors all year round. The writer's works come to life in the garden. Peace out our imperfections with your thoughts. Into a thousand parts, divide one man and make two imaginary pure thoughts. Think when we talk of horses that you see them printing their proud hoofs in the receiving earth. For it is your thoughts that now must deck our kings, carry them here and there, jumping our time and turning the accomplishment of many years into an hourglass. For the which supply, admit me chorus to this history, who prologue like. Your humble patience pray, gently to hear and kindly to judge. Our play! Shakespeare was born here in Stratford-upon-Avon back in 1564. 500,000 tourists a year pass through the cottage. And there is a Shakespeare pub, bistro and cafe on just about every corner. Now it all could be much ado about nothing if the conspiracists have their way. But as one local said to me, does it really even matter? And I don't think it does. A debate about the Bard's bona fides as a writer will probably continue, but the magic of a visit to Stratford-upon-Avon cannot be denied. Now here in the UK, you are never more than a stone's throw from the nearest castle or stately home. There are literally hundreds of historic sites to explore, like this one, the ever popular Chatsworth House here in Derbyshire, which is home to the Duke and Duchess of Devonshire. Now, the home was featured in the film version of Pride and Prejudice, starring Kira Knightley as the feisty Lizzie Bennet. And I can just see Mr. Darcy cantering in across those fields. 
Chatsworth represented Mr Darcy's home of Pemberley in the film and is certainly one very impressive set of digs. Parts of the estate date back to the 1500s, but the layout of the house and garden that you see today came into being in the first half of the 1800s. The home has more than 30 rooms, packed with a priceless collection of art and furnishings. Several rooms are open to the public, including the great dining room and the epic sculpture gallery. Keep an eye out for one of Chatsworth's most famous sculptures, The Veiled Vestal Virgin by Raphael Monti. It featured in Pride and Prejudice. There are plenty of towns and cities across the UK that bring the past to life, but perhaps none more so than York in Northern England. This cathedral city is steeped in 2,000 years of history. York Minster is one of the must-sees, but I'm off to take a stroll on the wall that once encircled the entire city. Now York is a fantastic example of a medieval city. You really get a feel of what life would have been like here in the 15 and 1600s. Now if you stepped out of line, at best you could end up with a public spanking at the whip my wop my gate. At worst, you could end up with your head on top of one of the city gates. The gates date back to Roman times and were used to collect taxes on goods entering the city. Just strolling the cobbled streets inside is a fabulous experience, but there's one street that attracts more than its fair share of attention. Now the Shambles is one of the most visited and photographed streets in the whole of Europe. It's a great spot for a little bit of browsing in the shops. You've got handmade chocolates, you've got toys, souvenirs. Some of the shops date back to the 1400s. And here you have the York Sausage Shop. And I think there's a pork pie with my name on it. York is a captivating place and you'll no doubt find yourself wanting to extend your stay. But we're only halfway through our adventure and Scotland awaits. We cross the border into Scotland and head for Edinburgh, one of the UK's best loved cities. Follow the Royal Mile up to brooding Edinburgh Castle, which has served as a home to Scottish royalty and to defend Scotland against various invading armies for several centuries. The castle is now one of Edinburgh's most popular attractions. It offers epic city views and there are endless chapters of its history to explore. You'll need the best part of a day to do it justice. Don't miss the firing of the one o'clock gun at, you guessed it, 1pm. Ships in the Firth of Forth once set their maritime clocks by the daily firing, which began back in 1861. The Scottish Crown Jewels are one of the castle's must-sees, but there's another glittering spectacle that packs in the crowds. The Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo, which is staged at the castle in August each year, has been wowing audiences with its military pipe bands and drummers, Highland dancers and synchronised marching since 1950.
It's hard to describe just how amazing it is to attend the tattoo, and the castle as a backdrop only adds to the experience. Edinburgh is also home to Holyrood Palace, the Queen's official Scottish residence, and one of Her Majesty's former abodes, the spectacular Royal Yacht Britannia, which is moored in Leith, just north of the city. Launched in 1953 and finally decommissioned in 1997, Britannia was built in Scotland and travelled more than a million nautical miles during her time in service. The ship is now open to the public and provides a fascinating insight into royal life. See the living areas, the very modest bedrooms, the Queen's office and the state dining room. The teak-lined Sun Lounge was reputedly one of the Queen's favourite spots on board. And here I get a lesson in royal telephone etiquette. An hour's drive north of Edinburgh will bring you to fabulous Scone Palace. Scone was the site of the crownings of Scottish kings for several centuries. The grounds are a magnificent spot for a meander and include a replica of the Stone of Scone on the Moot Hill. Here, royal coronations once took place, including that of Robert the Bruce in 1306. The real stone is housed in Edinburgh Castle. Tour the palace itself or simply explore the grounds, which cover around 100 acres and include a maze and an adventure playground. The resident Highland cattle are more than happy to pose for photos in return for a scratch behind the ears. Now we're passing through the central Scottish Highlands, which is about as Scottish as you can get. Spectacular glens, crystal clear mountain streams, castles, and of course, single malt Scotch whiskey. And it would be very rude to come all this way without trying a dram of the local drop at the Glenlivet Distillery, which has been producing single malt since 1824. Situated on the northern edge of Cairngorms National Park, the Glenlivet was established by one George Smith. His initially illicit operation hidden away in the hills eventually went legit and the Glenlivet went on to become one of Scotland's best known single malts. Today, visitors to the distillery can take part in a variety of tours and tastings and while we weren't able to film in the distillery itself during our visit, I did take the opportunity to learn more of the brand's amazing backstory and admire some of its many accolades. And there seemed no time like the present to swat up on the liquid gold.
Well, here we are on the banks of the legendary Loch Ness. I have my special Scottish hat on to celebrate. No sightings of the Loch Ness monster thus far, although I am told they increase after a couple of drams of the local drop. Not that I would know anything about that, but we will keep our eyes peeled. Loch Ness is located just south of the city of Inverness and is just under 40 kilometres long. There are plenty of scenic spots to conduct your search for Nessie, but one of the most atmospheric has to be Urquhart Castle. The castle dates back to the 1200s but was left in ruins in 1692 by British forces keen to keep the Jacobites out in the cold. Today it's a popular spot to soak up the extraordinary beauty of the loch and the highlands. And finally, heading south towards Glasgow, where we'll wind up this road trip, there's one final must-see, gorgeous Loch Lomond, part of Scotland's Loch Lomond and the Trossachs National Park. Loch Lomond is the largest loch in Scotland. In fact, it's the largest expanse of fresh water in the United Kingdom. Cruise Loch Lomond operates several cruises on the tranquil waters. They include full commentary and are a wonderfully relaxed way to learn some of the history of the region. And of course, soak up the natural beauty of these bonny banks. For more ideas for amazing things to see and do in the UK, just visit our website. <laughs>